Welcome back to California Cooking. We've got a great show lined up for you, starting with the authors of the new cookbook, Joy of Pizza, who are revealing the keys to making the perfect pie. Then I'm showing you how to make three delicious dinners, saucy turkey meatballs, cheesy baked rigatoni, and turkey cranberry and brie sliders, all out of one meal prep. Did you ever think about it, but there's really a science behind the perfect pizza. And the authors of the new book, Joy of Pizza, are sharing all of their secrets. And guess what? You don't need special water or a pizza oven or ingredients flown over from Italy. Here's how you do it. Hi, guys. Hi. How you doing? Great. Good, good. I'm good. Um, just, you know, I feel like the only, an empty, sitting at an empty table with you two just seems like a crime. Like we need to be. It's true. Digging in. When I was looking at this book, The Joy of Pizza, you know how they say like, do one thing and do it well? <laughs> this is like exhibit A. That is a story of my life. When you think of a science book, that's like the, the science of pizza. It's so important. You have to understand the science in order to practice the, yes. the craft. Both of you have this deep like, love of food and but in particular with this book pizza where does that come from childhood yeah yeah we both grew up in new jersey and okay. pizza is pervasive mm -hmm. everywhere you go there's 10 pizzerias every right. single town and it's just part of daily life living on the east coast as a chef i always wanted to make food for the people right. uh, i wanted to make food for people on a daily basis that was accessible and affordable and it turns out that pizza is just my my way of connecting with people. How did you two connect for this book? We met in Italy. Did uh, you really? Yeah. Okay. When chefs go to Italy, you, they hang out with Katie Parla. Yeah. Okay, Katie also told me, she's like, if anybody's talking pizza, she's like, I'm at the table. Yeah. Like that, and that is, that's quite the calling card. Yeah, I mean, pizza in Italy is so diverse and every city has their right. own approach or sometimes like in Rome, we've got four different pizza styles mm -hmm. and wading through that is really complicated. So I ate all the pizza and that way people can like really focus on what will inspire them in their own restaurants. Yeah. Now your spot is Razza yes. in New Jersey. Jersey City, New Jersey. Talking yeah. back to the book, The Joy of Pizza, Really, this book kind of goes into, you don't have to be a chef with a great pizza restaurant. You can be anybody and perfect pizza. Yes. But we always hear that it's gotta be the water, the flour, the food, the... It's no. all myths. All myths? Okay, bust some of those myths for us. What, what did you learn in your studying of pizza? It's a practice, it's a craft. Right, it's probably yeah. about 30 different steps to making great pizza, okay. and you have to identify those steps yes. and perfect each step of the process. One of my favorite days, and this is kind of weird, is like the water. The water subject. day? Yeah, okay. because everyone's like, oh, yeah. I like, if I'm a Neapolitan, if I'm gonna go make pizza somewhere, I'm bringing water with me. Right. Water is the least important element. Yeah. Like all of the other choices that you make, whether it's the way you handle the dough, whether it's the way that you manage fermentation, those are all hugely important. Um, and water is actually not that big of a deal. Okay, so yeah. what is the big deal? What is the, can we even pinpoint one thing? There's not one no. thing. Like 56 Steps. of them. Yeah. <laughs> uh, start on page one and uh, yeah. take some notes. Okay. It's, a, it's a process, really. Yeah. We're just interested in the absolute most elemental version of pizza. Which flour, is flour, water, water, salt, and yeast. And that's it. That's it. And Nothing now, can else. we do it in a regular oven? Absolutely. It gets hot enough? That's one of the other biggest myths. It doesn't have to be that hot. Really? But you have to start with a dough recipe that's formulated around that oven that you're using. Okay, let's talk about sauce. How do you determine what makes sense for sauce? Okay, so for tomatoes, it's a big topic for me. There are so many different tomatoes out there, so I always recommend tasting. Okay. And we do tomato tastings constantly at the restaurant, but yes. we do a formal one once a year. Are you doing canned tomatoes or are we doing? Yeah, so yes. in the peak of tomato season, uh -huh. which New Jersey is- That's true. Amazing for tomatoes. That's true. Um, we do use fresh tomatoes. Okay. Most 99% of the pizza sauce out there is from a canned tomato because tomatoes grow right. once a year, so they're picked at right. the- peak of their season and then preserved, whether it's in a jar or a can. It's pretty affordable to go and just buy one oh, yeah. of each can. Test pick your and tomato. Pick yeah. your tomato. And do a taste test at your house. I, it's taste kind of them. fun. And so. is it always better the, I mean, you're, like New Jersey tomatoes are great, but is the Italian tomato always the winner? No. Never the winner. 
you know, you know who has won the past eight years? Mm. California. Yeah. Come on. Now, cheese. Where, where do we go with cheese? Cheese is what people, one of the many things that people truly love about pizza. Yeah. Uh, when choosing cheese, I always like to start with uh, fresh mozzarella versus the, uh, you know, the, the stuff that you grate. Yes. Um, and you want to get it as close to the day that it is okay. born. Yeah. I'm starving. Oh my, are you? What are we making? You're going to make what? some pizza. <laughs> with the experts. Okay, here we go. Are we ready to do this? We're ready to do this. We're gonna flour the top so that it doesn't stick to us. Isn't it fun to play with dough? Yes. And you can see we're being very gentle with it. We, we don't, don't need to like throw it up in no, the air. That's just we being, don't need to. That's just showing off. <laughs> yeah. How do you know when you've kind of stretched it out enough? It just. Um, so it really depends on the size pizza that you're making. You just get a feel for it. Yeah, totally. That's it. So now we have some of our California tomatoes. Okay, raw, fresh. So these are um, just, we buy the best tomatoes that we can find. Yeah. We um, open the can, run them through a food mill. Okay. And then add just a tiny bit of salt. And then this is our fresh mozzarella. And there's less of it than you think. And this is how you keep it from being too wet. You can't over sauce, right? Because yeah. then you don't get the nice yeah. hold to your pizza. Less is always more when it comes to pizza. And this is our guanciale. Now talk to people about guanciale if they don't really know what you that know. is. Guanciale is cured pork gel. And when you see it, it's kind of this like trapezoidal cured meat uh -huh. that can be sliced. And you can see that it has this sort of marbling like pancetta. Yeah. Um, but it's actually about like 30% more fatty. Okay. And the thinness here is really key and it's gonna sort of melt onto the pizza and you'll be able to eat it. It's just a little bit of red onion and that's it. That's it. But this is the part I get stressed out for you guys with the... The launch. Is that what it the is? Launch. The launch. That it comes off yes. the board. Yeah, thankfully in our book we have QR codes yeah. to uh, videos that are just like three second videos okay. of me showing you how to actually do it. Okay. I've done this a few times. Yes, that's how the pros do it. So what's going on in the oven there? Wood is our fuel here. There's no gas or anything. Yeah. And we're checking the bottom to see how the bottom's baking because we want it to be nice and crispy. I see the bubbles already happening. There's on some the bubbles. Crust. It's going to be good. Okay. Are you hungry? Um, I am starving. I'm so starving. True. I was at work today. I said I'm not going to eat a big breakfast because I'm. Uh, this is. This is what I'm waiting for. Do you still get excited? You do. Hell see? yeah! Are you kidding me? My profession is pizza. Yes. What? I love how excited you are to eat your pizza today. All right, ready? Yeah. So now we're gonna finish it off with a little bit of Pecorino uh, Romano. Uh, yeah. We don't need a plate, let's just eat no, it like we don't. this. We're friends. Okay. Notice the first thing. You can pick it up with your hands. Yes. Look at that. No tip sag. Cheers. Cheers. Look. Food bowl. Oh, mm -hmm. well. Yes. <laughs> oh my gosh. You see how the guanciale is crispy on the edges, but soft and pliable on the bottom. Well, it absolutely like melts into the pizza. It just gives you that little porkiness. <laughs> mm -hmm. And it's so light, you could easily eat a whole pizza by yourself. Oh, no. Thanks, Dan. Thank you. Coming up, three meals in one. First on the menu, turkey meatballs, then it's cheesy rigatoni and turkey cranberry sliders using all the same ingredients. That's coming up next. You know, food prices, they are sky high. So I've got some easy ways to stretch your dollar. Let's start with my first recipe, turkey meatballs. Today's uh, menu idea is how can you make one meal and then spread it out through the week so you get three different meals? Because I like leftovers, but I don't like the same thing three nights in a row. You know what I mean? So I like to take one thing and then recreate it into three different meals. So that's what I'm gonna try to do today. And the first thing 
are these meatballs? And I saw Jamie Oliver on Instagram. I love him so much. He had a one pot meal and he made what he calls 50-50 meatballs. 50% meat, he used pork, I'm gonna use turkey, 50% bean. And he used something called the Berlotti bean, which I've actually never heard of. I'm gonna use a cannellini white bean. So I just, it basically stretches the meat, so it saves you a lot of money, and it really makes like this creamy texture for a meatball. Um, so I'm gonna do that with a little bit of a sauce and some bread. So first, just like you would a meatball, do uh, a little bit of onion. Try to chop it up thinly because I'm not gonna cook this onion. And that's just saving you a step so you don't have to saute it. So in there, go some chopped onion. Now, the turkey, ground turkey. This is white meat turkey, that's all they had, but I actually think it's okay. White meat turkey can be dry, but we're putting in so many other things like the beans, like some parsley that I think it'll be okay. I don't think it'll be dry at all. A spoonful of ricotta cheese, a little bit of lemon zest. I have some thyme, fresh thyme, a couple sprigs, oh, some garlic, a clove or two, I would say. Now thinking about it, I didn't have to dice the onion really because it's going in here, but that's all right. Just a pop of that. Parmesan cheese. As much as you're willing to shave into there. I like fresh shaved, but you could already buy it shaved. Save yourself a little, but get the real stuff. Remember the real stuff has Parmesan stamped on the rind. That's how you know it's real. Olive oil, give it a glug. Salt, good pinch. Pepper. I have a little rosemary too. I might add a few sprigs of rosemary, just a little bit. Oh, parsley, because there's so much water in parsley, it provides moisture to your meatball. There we go. Our mixture is done. This is the messy part. You take the rings off, it's gooey. There you go, just do it quickly. Try to make them uniform. Sometimes a scooper can help with that. I just like to eyeball it. But it is sticky and that's what the bean did, right? Time to shallow fry up our meatballs. So I just have some butter and some olive oil together and just let them brown up. Meatballs are coming out. They're not fully cooked. I'm gonna pop them in the oven and just let them continue cooking in the oven so I can get my net, next batch going. They're misshapen, but they're rustic. That's what you call misshapen. Okay, meatballs in second batch. Now, in here, we're gonna make a quick sauce. So, some onion, just no draining, just keep everything, turn it down a little, but keep everything in there. The oil, the butter, garlic, three cloves I put, onion. I'm gonna throw in a whole sprig of rosemary, and then I'm gonna peel some thyme, just making a real quick sauce to go with our meatballs. Tomato puree. And it's just strained Italian tomatoes. To that, we're going to add some salt. Nice fat pinch of salt. Also, I keep the rinds of my Parmesan cheese because they're really good for moments like this. The parts you don't use, you pop them in the freezer and I put them in stews and I put them in soups and I put them in sauces. So you just let it melt in there. And that's it. I mean, we're just gonna let that bubble for a little bit. And this will be the sauce for our meatballs. So our sauce, simmering away for about 15 minutes. Check the seasoning, see if you need more salt. But here's the cool twist for our meatballs. We're not gonna have it with pasta, our meatballs. I'm gonna put the cannellini bean that's in the meatballs, another box of cannellini beans, in the sauce that you will dip your bread into and you will soak your, your turkey meatballs in. Done. All you need to do is heat the beans through, quick. Ready to serve up our meatballs. So we have our crunchy ciabatta bread that I put in the oven. 
Got it nice and crispy with some olive oil. Our sauce, that is tomato puree, garlic, onions, a little bit of rosemary, and some thyme. And then the magic is that Parmesan rind. And we cooked all of this in the butter and olive oil that we cooked our meatballs in. So, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna just drop a few of these in here just to show you guys how I would plate them up. What do you think? Five a serving? And then get a nice bowl. And then you stick this crunchy ciabatta bread. But to that, gotta hit it up with some Parmesan cheese. A little drizzle of olive oil. Maybe just because green makes things look prettier. Just a touch of parsley. And there's a different spin on a meatball. All right, I'm digging in. But first, this bread. Gotta try the bread. Now a meatball. I like it. Coming up, I'm taking the sauce from those meatballs to make a cheesy rigatoni, and the extra meatballs from that first meal will make meal number three, turkey, cranberry, and brie sliders. That's coming up next. Okay, here's how I stretch that meatball dish and create two other delicious dishes. Take a look. Dish number two with our leftovers. We're not gonna use the meatballs on this one, but we are gonna use the sauce. So here's the tomato sauce with the onions and the garlic, the thyme, the rosemary. And I'm going to keep the beans in there. To that, some rigatoni pasta. So I cooked my rigatoni, and I'm going to add some butter. And the rigatoni's hot still, so you're just gonna let that melt into our rigatoni. And usually you'd say, well, why wouldn't you use olive oil? Because this has a little bit of a different spin because it started with a little butter. We cooked the meatballs in some butter and olive oil, and it adds a richness that you just, butter's the only one that can do it. Okay, so that's melted. It takes some muscles, but here goes. The rest of your sauce, I'm gonna get that last little bit. Easy. So really, as quick as you can boil up some pasta, this dish is pretty much done. But here's what we're gonna do, just because. In to a big skillet, because we're popping it in the oven. So to that, some dollops of ricotta cheese. We have the ricotta leftover from the meatball, so again, we're using our leftovers. And it's gonna give you this creamy, tomatoey sauce. Some bocconcini, the little mozzarella balls. Fresh mozzarella. And you're just gonna tuck them in. And it's gonna give you this melted cheese on top. A drizzle of olive oil. Okay, that's it. Pop it in the oven, a pretty hot oven, because everything's cooked. You just wanna melt the cheese. Bubbly cheese. Yes. More cheese. Just one more little. Just a tiny bit of Parmesan. And this is leftovers. It doesn't look like leftovers, does it? It takes on a whole new life. One night of leftovers. Now a second night of leftovers. And it involves cute little Hawaiian rolls and our turkey meatballs. I had uh, a sandwich recently, a turkey burger at Claudine's in Encino, and they took a turkey burger and they put cranberry sauce and brie and an herby mayo, and it was so good. And normally, that wouldn't be something I would get on the menu. But since it's November and cranberries are prevalent, I thought this would be kind of the perfect nod to Thanksgiving. First thing would be to make an herby mayo. So I've got the leftover herbs that we use, the thyme, the rosemary, the parsley. And we're just gonna chop it up as finely as we can. Herbs into our mayo, pinch of salt. And instead of raw garlic, which can be a little strong, I'm gonna do some garlic powder. And that's it, you got your herby mayo. So here's how I would make our little sliders with our toasted Hawaiian rolls. I would do a schmear on the bottom, take our cute little meatballs, 
one for each bun. And for dinner, you know, serve a couple of these with a salad or something. Perfect. Cranberry sauce. Just a tiny little bit on top. Brie cheese. So just little slices of brie. You might want to keep the brie cold, which I didn't do. I had it out of the fridge. Probably better to keep it refrigerated so you can cut slices of brie. When it gets soft, it makes it a little tricky. And one last thing, we're gonna pop it under the broiler for just a second to melt that cheese. That was two minutes, not even, under the broiler. All you wanna do is melt that brie ever so slightly. And then we put the little hat on. I think toothpicks might help with this, just because you don't want your little guys to tip over. Just a little bit. Those are cute. Time to try my turkey meatball brie cranberry slider. This might be my favorite. That herby mayo, too. Wear a bib. I'm not a big fan of the same leftovers night after night, but when you create two new dishes out of it, like I did today, I'm all in. For the complete recipes, you can follow us on our Instagram page. Well, that does it for us. Thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you next week. Wait, is it plugged? Oh, this is mine. <laughs>